Now coming to this, so first we have the preface which talks about this foundation of this or how about the history of it, you know when was it first published and all that. So those details will be given in the preface section. If at all if you have any questions from the ICD 10 part you can very well go to that preface part and then you can understand it. Next we will see the code structure. We can have a maximum of 7 characters. With ICD 9 mostly we had the numerical characters whereas with ICD 10 now we have started to have alphanumeric characters and these characters can vary to 7 characters in the sense like they have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So how this would be like? First we have a, at least a 3 digit numbers. The 3 digit numbers in the sense it can be alphabets or numbers. You should understand where all you will have numbers and where all you will have alphabets. So for that I am giving one example like I10. Remember this code. This is actually a code for hypertension. Okay. I is an alphabet. So the first character will always be an alphabet. And all the alphabets are present in the ICD 10 CM codes. So next is I said like I10. So 1 and 0. The second character is always a number. And third character is 0. So the third character is always a number. But from characters 4 to 7, it can be either numbers or it can be either alphabets. So that is what we need to know. Is that clear for you? I10, just keep in mind. So the first three characters, we call that as a category. Because say, for instance, I10, which is a code for hypertension, just these three codes itself would become a would qualify as a valid code because I10 is a valid ICD 10 CM code. So we can have the range from category to subcategory. Anything after this category, we call that as a subcategory. 